Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV's post-match party. The only West Ham United post-match for the show on the internet. We've just come back from the London Stadium where we've beaten Tottenham by one goal to nil. As you can see, everyone's having a great time. You can probably hear that uh, from where you are. We couldn't even get in there to get the pints. No, couldn't even get in there to get the pints. But um, Scotty, take through start now. Fabianti in goal, Johnson continued at right back, Zuma and Ogbonna in the centre. Creswell left back, Rice Suchek, Benrahma four nails, Bowen with Antonio up front. Strongest Su team we had available, I think. Yeah, yeah obviously Sufal misses out with his green strain, but as I said the other night, I'm comfortable when Johnson's in there. Uh, don't mind a bit of Johnson, as tell you know, you what, Scott. Mate, I'll tell you <laughs> what, today, he was fucking brilliant. Defensively, he is solid, I, yeah. I believe. I think that's even stronger than attacking wise. I think defensively, he offers a lot, and today he was unbelievable. I think it's a I bit think. of a, as much as I love Sue Fell, I think it might have been a bit of blessing having Johnson there because of the pace of Son and Mora swapping on the wings. Johnson can keep up with them, can't he? Yeah, yeah. See, I think without Sue Fell, you lose that little bit of attacking friend. You know, he, he's a lot better going forward than Johnson, but I can't fault Johnson defensively in the two games that he's played um, this week. He's, he's been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And it shows we, we've got cover in them areas now, which is, you know, the whole back four is cover. You know, Johnson, all right, we, we look at Creswell left back. If we lose him, you, you're sticking Johnson there. You know, we saw Fredericks come on left back at, um, against Gink. So, you know, we've got a lot of options defensively. And that's, for Moyes, that's what he wants. And as we said the other night, you've got a Bonner and Zuma, but if they're injured, you've got a Diop or a Dawson to come in. It's, it's, it's a strong... Yeah. We've got like we've been waiting years to get as many good defenders as this. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and, that, and that's it. And it's you know you look at Moyes, what he wants to do. He builds from the back, and you know we said the options we got, the players that we got, the form that these players are in. You you can put any of them in that in that back four now, and they'll do a solid job. And that, you're not going to doubt them. The, 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 the important thing for me today is is the bounce of back back ability. You know, Brentford we weren't great. We bounced back against Everton. Now we've beaten Gink. Now we've beaten Tottenham. And once again, from that bit where you're looking at the table and you're thinking, oh, that could be a bit ooky the next couple of games because I know we've got Liverpool and City and, and obviously Spurs coming up. You think, you know, we could slip down the league a bit of it. It was good as they ever was. Yeah. And it, as you know what, and I don't want to look ahead, but if we do beat Aston Villa, we're still in the top four. And they say after 10 games, you get a bit of a feel about where everyone's going to be for the season and what it plays to yeah. be fighting for. And, that's, we'll hopefully have a good season like we I mean, it's, it's been the perfect week, isn't it? Three wins, no goals conceded, three great performances. Um, and look, you can't argue. I mean, you can hear the atmosphere in the background. I mean, it's been like that since we left the stadium. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is an hour and a half after the game nearly. And it, this is where it's about now. There's a different sort of feel to West Ham at the moment. And, and you enjoy coming over here and, you know, Let's not kid ourselves. That weren't a vintage, vintage performance. No, I mean... We, we haven't played that of our No, no. First, first 10 minutes, I think we was on top. And then I think after that, 20, 25 minutes, I think Tottenham took control of the first half. And we were chasing chasing them for a little bit. And they was, we was letting them knock them back. And it was a bit of a, a sort of mixed first half, wasn't it, really? Yeah, yeah it was, it, the, 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 the start of the game was very seesawish. You know, we had the opening 10, then them, then us, then them. And they, they, they probably finished the half a bit better than what we did. And then come out second half, it was similar to the same. They started where they left off and then we grew back into the game. Look, I think at the end of the day, if we had walked off that pitch today with a draw, it would have been a fair reflection. But overall, I thought we created the better chances. Yeah, easily. It's just, and I was saying to you, isn't it? The big, I think our biggest problem is our accuracy with our shooting. Because the amount of times we don't even take shots at the keeper, it all goes wide or above. And that was my worry, like, shit, we're going to waste all these chances. And they're going to get one. And yeah, yeah, and that's what it looked like, didn't and it? And I, I, I said that to Nicky, like, I could see this going one nil either way. Like, it's just who wants it more, who's going to go for that extra bit. And it obviously it proved to be us, thank God. But, I mean, look, Antonio first half, he was a bit isolated when he, you know, nothing was sticking to him. You know how things stick to Antonio when he just yeah. comes into him? It was bouncing off him and they was getting every second ball and you just think to yourself, oh, this is going to be one of them days because Tottenham haven't been great. But as you said, you can see them going to nick here. Yeah, that's it. And that's, that's the problem, you know, they've still got dangerous players. Look, Kane ain't the Kane that we saw in the Euros is a Kane who's not happy where he is, but he's still a threat. Son is, I've said this for years, he's Spurs' his best player. Yeah. You know, but... They, he was their best player today. Yeah, exactly. He, he was the one that caused the most danger. I think what we did, what we did do enough in the first half, 
You see a couple of times when we put a through ball to Antonio to run onto, he had the beat in a Dyer all day long. Yeah. And we just didn't do it enough. We pumped no. it too long. And in the air, Dyer's going to Dyer's gonna win as much as he loses. <laughs> but on the floor, Antonio had him all day. And we just didn't put that through ball in the right I areas. We weight our passes a little bit over heavy. Like, and that's why I think Ben Rahm, he didn't have a great game today. But he was getting a lot of heavy passes at, at him. And he was yeah. kind of I said that to Nicky because Nicky was a bit frustrated ben, with Ben Rama today. And I can see where he's coming from. But I did say to him, I said, look, some of them balls that are being hit towards him are being over hit. Yeah. And you take that little touch and then Tottenham's midfield and, and Dembele was on him straight away and four nails I thought he had another great game Bowen running socks off today it's, do you know what it's, it's a team that we're proud of you know you come over in there and we can name our starting 11 and you know they're going to give it they're going to give everything for 90 minutes do you, do you know what I love right Zuma came out early in the week and said look I, I faced Antonio in training I ain't scared of Kane and all of a sudden you're thinking shit that's going to come back to bite us and he Is had a man of the match Zuma yeah. and he had a man of the match performance and pocketed but Kane. he's right though isn't he because if you think about it Harry Kane is not the Harry Kane that we know I mean Antonio this season if you had to pick a striker to have now Antonio or Harry Kane you're going to go Antonio because he's in form yeah that's it, that, that, and, and that's exactly the thing. And the thing is, all right, look, we're sitting, sitting here saying this Spurs player didn't play technique and, and that. But at the end of the day, the overall team performance from us is that you see we've got a way to play. We see we've got an identity, identity now and we make we are hard to play against. No matter who you are, we're hard to play against. Yeah. You know, whether you're an on form Manchester City or whether you're Norwich, you know, we are gonna make it really hard for you to come and play. And that's what we did. We well, made that, it hard for Spurs to play between the lines today. Oh, what, what, what I would say is that although I don't think it was a vintage performance today attacking wise, I thought defensively yeah. Oh, it's the best I've seen. And that's where we had to be strong today because you think about it, they rested their 11 for the other night and, and this team's played three games in a week. I know we rested some the other night, but Bowen, that's his third full game in a week, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Exactly. Rice and Suchek. Rice, Suchek. Creswell. And, and that's credit to them that they're 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 keeping themselves fit and match ready and, and just ready to I go always, each game. I, I always thought that was risky from Tottenham to rest your 11. I, I don't think that always works. No. Like to, for, for everyone to, to, to sit out, mm. you know, because it was everybody. I don't think it always works because you want it to as I, I said this on a, on a Tottenham channel I mean the guy was sort of like talking about me like like, like you know it, it, like Toby from so, yeah yeah, yeah it, a bit disrespectful to us there. obviously they're, they're gonna be um, it's your cup final bloody bloody blah and I'm like listen you're the one that's rested all your team this week you, you know it's, it's not a cup final it's about the importance of in the league and, and, I, and, and this is what I said to him I said look if you have taken us as seriously as, as we take you, you'd have won a few more things because it's always been us that ended yeah. up stopping their runs, yeah. right? Cups and fucking this and this and this. I said, like, you can't turn around and say, oh, it's not a rival because we always seem to get the better of you when it matters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a derby. And that's the thing. Yeah. So you're not taking the, your derby and seriously. Certain, it's certainly a fucking rivalry now because I, I, like, we'll talk about this in a second after we finish talking the game, but I think we're the better team. I honestly On do. paper, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you look at the two squads and if you've done a 1-11, to 11, I know there was another Tottenham channel the other day that only put Soufal and I think it was, at, at, was it Rice in their, in their team. And I'm feeling myself like, but they're going to do that. They're, we're probably pick more West Ham players than we would Tottenham because we watch them week in, week out. So that's fair enough. But no, I just think today, uh, look, we wanted it more. Antonio, second half, improved. He was chasing everything down. And he's cut himself the winner. He loves a goal against this lot. That, he loves a goal against this lot, especially a winner. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you talk to any Spurs fan who isn't a deluded fan, you know... You won't find many of them. No. Uh, they they, they were worried. Like Pokemon, them are. <laughs> they were worried about today. You know, they knew that we would be causing yeah. problems. And that's what he said. To rest your t entire eleven and then lose both their games, you can't get more Spurs in than that. And, and, and the years. thing is, though, Scott, like as much as the, That's the like, history of the Tottenham. No, but it, us coming into today's game, we're worried about them because we know on their day they have got world class players yeah. that can punish. And yeah. I know Harry Kane is off form at the moment. But, but you've got again against Newcastle, and that's where I thought shit. He's yeah, got that first I, I, I think that's the difference between us and their fans. Is I respect them. I respect what they've done. I respect yeah. the players that they've got, and I, I do worry about them. We've got, and as, as I said the other day, I don't think it's going to be a runaway. I think we, you know, you've got to be on top of your game to beat them, and we were on top of that game. Yeah. And I think that's the difference between the two sides today. It was always going to be a tight game today because you've got two teams similar form this season, similar league positions, and and as you said, we are rivals now in the league table with them, and that's how it is. You know, they don't like 
little old West Ham rivaling them now. And they won't admit it. They won't call us rivals. But they're looking at league tables like their fans be on the train going back home thinking, fucking hell, you know, we needed a p three points there or even a point. They, they cling on for a point today. Hey, look at it. We're, we're, we're top, you know, of our group in Europa League. They're third of the group in their, in their group. To be fair, that, that's not a fair reflection because if they wanted to be top of that group, they'd be top. Yeah, yeah. but to be fair, right, they thought, they genuinely think that the team they put out is good enough to be top of that league. Well, I'll tell you right? something, their manager isn't good enough. Their down slide of the manager since Pochettino, then to Mourinho, then to this guy. But it's Scott, it's Scott said it the other night. It's like you can go into your Europa League campaign and your league form really dips. And we have had, all right, we, we drew Just one. Distance. Yeah, we drew one. We, we lost one. And obviously we've won one today, but it's difficult sometimes to get that run. And that, and that. But the thing is, we're bouncing back after defeats. And that's the difference. That's why we're not down the bottom of the table and we are competing at the right end. The thing, the thing, the thing is, well, we've rested in your entire 11. You lose that little bit of momentum. You know, they, Spurs picked up momentum by beating Newcastle, right? If they had just rested a couple of players, yeah. like what we did, mix the Four side or five up, changes. that momentum keeps going. I, I, I'm, I'm glad they did, though. Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> when, when, day, when, it, well, I spoke to the Tottenham fan the other day, Toby, and I said to him, I thought you should have played Kane in the Europa League, in, in the Conference League, because he's got himself a goal and he wants to carry on that, that, that confidence. I said, he's got a tough game the next game, like he's going to be, he's going to find it tough against West Ham and you want him going in full confidence. He laughed at me. Well, the game before that in Who's Europe, the game before that in Europe, Kane got a hat trick, so yeah. he would have got into a bit of momentum. But do you know what? I'm glad they rested the whole eleven because fuck them. Yeah. But um, it doesn't yeah, always work it. like that, you know. You, you, you need, you, you know, sometimes like when you got this many games and you got these games on your mind, uh, like you say to the first time, you can have a rest. You can think about West Ham. It's too long to think about West Ham. <laughs> do you know what I love though? When when Antonio scored the winners, they always do it to Nicky. I always say VAR. And he always has a little, he's celebrating. I always go, no, no, look, Nick, look, look at VAR. And he has that little look at the screen. But I, I panic him. I like panicking him. But now, what a finish. Creswell, great, great assist from Creswell. Well, I thought we had a brilliant game today, Creswell, down the left. That, that, that cross he put in the box yeah. in the first opening 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, and that's what that's what we know Suchik. Creswell can do. Yeah, Suchik had that header just over. I mean, they didn't really threaten much, did they? And Fabianski didn't really have much to do. They had a couple of half chances, yeah. nothing really major, nothing that really threatened us. I mean, Son went through. I think he sort of mishit it, didn't he, towards um, Fabianski, yeah, they, saved it. But yeah, we, we I just had, think we dealt with them every time they got into yeah. those dangerous areas. You would say we had more clear cut chances. You know, you, you had, as I said, the, the ball that went in and, and Suchek headed over. Um, we had a Fornell's chance that he blazed over. There was another chance from uh, Fornell's uh, pull, made the East pull off the save. Um, Suchek blazed one over as well. Yeah. You know, and, and like I said, first half, they had the Sun chance. Second half, they had the Kane chance. That was it. They didn't really have any other chance you think, oh, yeah, yeah, even, even go going one nil up, Scott, like, we, I didn't feel think that right now we're just going to sit back and soak up the pressure. I thought, no, we'll still play our game, which we did. And I ate it. We no, but, well but, you, but you, yeah, but you've got to expect Tottenham to have the ball because they've got to come to us then. And as soon as you do that, that's where you get the chance to break and maybe nick a second. But we soaked it up. Zuma and Ogbonna are just like the twin towers at the back, isn't they? Oh, like, man. you know what I mean? They're just solid. But, but, you know? When you look at the play, I, I, I honestly think, right, and I don't know whether I'm, I'm fucking mental or whatever, but I think they come here for a draw, Tottenham. Because you can see it in the way they were taking their goal kicks, their corners, yeah, just the injuries. Slow, weren't they? Yeah. they weren't in a rush. They were trying to do a Brentford and time waste from like the opening couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah but the, the bloke who sits near us was screaming, saying, hurry up, hurry up. I'm like, mate, we're winning 1-0. Yeah. Let them take their time. Why do you want them to hurry up? Yeah, it is. But you know what as well, right? what you were saying about how uh, uh, we are hard to beat, I still think we play really good football. <laughs> it's yeah. our, uh, what's his name? Oh, Alan McKnight. Alan McKnight. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, yeah. We I think we play really good football. Like but when when we're on the attack, the way we we, we pass the ball around, I, I'm, I find it really entertaining. It's not like we're just like defensive and no. you know what I mean long ball. That, that we, opening ten minutes, uh, I've said this a few times now. When we move the ball quick, one two touch passing. Yo, none of this. Take the touch. Take the touch. Take the touch. Yo, we, we look pass move pass move pass move. There ain't a side that will be able to handle us. The problem is we don't keep, we haven't got that consistency in playing that way. No. 
you know. But and the thing is, if we didn't have the European competitions, we probably would have that consistency in the yeah. league. But in Europe, we obviously have to change the team up a bit. But everyone that come in today, everyone that come in on Thursday night, everyone that played at Everton last week, you know, they're, they're doing us proud. You know, and it's, it's as I said to you, this might not be the greatest stadium in the world. It might not be our home, like feel like our home, but. You come over here now with a smile on your face, looking forward to watching the team. And that's what David Moyes has built, a team to be proud of. Yeah, massively. I thought the ref was Fucking a bit Michael shit Myers, today. look, on a scooter. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 He'd shit himself, look. <laughs> Halloween <laughs> mask. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought the ref was a bit shit today. He was doing my head in, like, with Yeah, he was. E uh, easily booking our players. And then some of the things he weren't giving, the, the jumping over Antonio and... He, he was a bit shit, but thankfully he didn't massively influence the game too much. But no, luckily enough he didn't. It's con you know again you ask for consistency in refereeing, and I thought today the referee had no consistency. He was biased one way all, all the whole game. Um, like you said, that Antonio one where the where the centre half goes over the top of him, and then he blows up for a foul on the centre half. Kane does that every single week, yeah, and he gets a free kick. And again, it's the consistency, you know, and. That's, that's probably one of the only downsides of today's game was, was the fact that you had, um, was it Dem on Dembele when he went over in the first, um, after Zuma took the ball off him and clattered him and he's rolling around on the floor like he'd been shot. And like, he's just laying there hoping that VAR look at something and they get a penalty. And then he done it later on and, and a player gets booked. And it's, it's just embarrassing. Like you're meant to be a grown man playing a contact sport and you're rolling around I mean, like a Declan Rice today. Is that the same oh no, <laughs> uh, she's all right. She's happy now. Look, he's smiling this week. But um, no, Declan Rice today as well. Breaking up play, fucking taking the ball forward, carrying it. It's the Declan Rice that you know week in week out he's performing like that. And when people pundits talk about him, that I mean, I, I can't remember it was someone. Said, I think it might be Trevor Sinclair on Talksport saying that. At the moment, Declan Rice is the hundred million pound player more than what Kane is. Yeah, massively. Listen, I was listening to Talksport on the way driving here to park up and all that, and one of the Spurs fans doing the radio show, one of the presenters, a Spurs fan, and he's like, "Some kid's coming over for his first game." He's like, "Oh well, yeah, but West, you shouldn't be. You should sit down and explain to him this ain't like West Ham winning games." Why the team like keep disrespecting us? Because at the end of the day, we're proving you wrong week in week out. Declan Rice today was the best player on that pitch yeah, 100%. by a country 100%. He, he, he was my man in the match. I know Zuma got it, yeah. but no, Declan Rice for me was head and shoulders above everyone on that pitch. Everyone. He, he's he's now world class. Oh. Some, some, look, someone said it when the camera went wrong. He turned around and said there was only one England captain on that pitch today. And he was right. That's yeah. Declan Rice. Yeah. He would definitely be an England captain. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, and that's what that's what frustrates me sometimes with Southgate when he gives the armband to Trippier and things like that, when you've got Declan Rice that really made England captain. But look, listen, Rice today was... It's, it's why we love coming over here and watching Declan Rice. Yeah, long mate, continue, mate. I said the pundits who keep screaming that he should go there and go there, you know. Again, you know, you had the column, I don't know whether you read it in the Daily Mail, because Neville come out and said that Rice should go to United. And the, the report in the Daily Mail ripped him a new one. You know, you're standing there one minute saying, oh, there shouldn't be a Super League, it's disrespectful. And, but you're trying to create a Super League by saying, oh, well, all the best players should go and play for teams like Man United. And then again, like, title chasing United, we're, well, we're above them in full place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They've so, got, are we title challengers? Yeah. They've got one of the best squads in the league and look at them. They've got a and shit they, manager. Yeah, but that's the one I'm saying. What? Why <laughs> should go to leave West Ham? Exactly. Well, why should go to West Ham? David Moyes. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, but yeah, yeah listen, yeah, listen, they should have given David Moyes a bit more time. But I'm glad they didn't because we wouldn't be seeing him over here now. Exactly. Look, there's no reason why Rice needs to leave this football club at the moment. A football club at the moment is stepping forward and stepping forward in the right way. Yeah. We're in Europe, we're playing well, we're playing some good football, we're entertaining to watch and <laughs> we are hard to beat. So that means we're pushing up the league. I've got, quick, I've got a quick question for you all, right? The ball pulled their finger out now. What happens? What do you mean? Like, Say for instance, we got to January. We're about this, so they went, you know what, here's hundred million quid, go and spend it. Well, it, I mean, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, January's hard. No, I'm just saying, I'm just no, saying. No, what, I know what, what you're saying. Cement, it would cement us finishing at least in the top six again, I think. And 
could push us on to win or get to the final. Does it change a few people's minds? It wouldn't change my mind. I'm gonna. I'm gonna no, look, you'll always have your opinions on on Gold and Sullivan, and rightly so. But you can't if they're going to stay around and they're, and they're trying to improve the team and we're pushing up the league and we're to, we're in Europe consistently and we're we're going for trophies then. Let that take a little bit of a back step and just let's just concentrate. And we'll always hate GSP, we know that. But sometimes let's just concentrate on what's going on on the pitch. It makes it a lot easier when the team's winning. So if you know, yeah, I think if if, if they did that, not that I'd forgive them. But sometimes you got to say fair play, right? You've done the right thing there. Now we can. Now you take it seriously. It's, it's not even. It's not even about just slapping hundred million down. It's it's allowing Moyes to go and get. If he wants to cut the players, get the players that he wants that are going to fit into the structure that he's he's built and he's building. We'll need in January, I think, because, you know, we, we are playing pretty much near enough the same 11 week in, week yeah. out. Yeah, it's going to get to about oh, Christmas yeah. time. It'll We're catch up with out. us, and we yeah. know that. Yeah. And that's why if we can get to January, squad's still like fit, there's no long-term injuries, we can add a couple of additions, then, then we can go for it second half of the season. This, this is the other key thing of where, how we're rotating certain players for the Europa League and stuff like that. As I said, you've seen the team go out in three games in Europa League, keep three clean sheets and win all three games. Now, no disrespect to teams within the Premier League, there is some teams within the Premier League that you'll probably get away with doing that against. You know, I'm not going to say what one because I've Norwich. called them out. Yet. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I, I, I understand. You, that, you, yeah. you, you look at, as we said, when you look at our 11 today and then you look at the, the, the team that was out against Genk, you can sit there and say that the team was out is, against the Genk problem is, can right, do a job against teams. But what like do we do Wednesday now? We've got, we got City here. We've won them two games. We're on a high. We want to carry on that form. We want to beat City. We beat City. We've got a fantastic opportunity yeah. of at least reaching the final with that competition. Yeah. It's I, not, and, I, and that's no joke. I can see a similar sort of side on Wednesday to what we had out on Thursday night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but a strong, a but, strong but, backbone. But what I'm saying is, is that, you know, if we get past that, if we get, if we win our next Europa League game and we're, we're going to top the group if it all the results go our way, what do you do then? Because the next rounds, we're going to have to start playing the, the more serious Oh, if we teams. win the group with a game or two to go, then you just rest. It don't matter yeah, if we lose rest, But I'm two, just saying yeah. the next rounds are going to be first. See, and see, they're going to need see, to be first team. But, but again, I wouldn't I wouldn't rest too many. Because I said you saw with Spurs, they rest in 11. Consistent. It don't work. You've still got to have... You, you know, may, maybe rest Rice and Nucleus. play and yeah. keep Suchek. Yeah, you know, you keep your sort of back. You need, you need, you need your comfort blanket in there, like the Rice yeah. and Suchek yeah. and things but like we, that. We also know that Rice and Suchek can't play. You know, it, it was probably unfortunate that Kroll had COVID because maybe he would have started and we would have had that opportunity to rest a Rice. You know, the, the and thing it, is you don't have to necessarily start him. You could bring on, say, a Suchek. You can bring him on later at seventy minutes in and give yeah. him a run out. But when, when you've got a player like Kroll, you could probably start Rice and Kroll first half. And then take Rice off if things are going all right, and then you've got Crow and Suchek who played together at the international scene. It's about making the squad, you know, the squad is good. As we've said, you've got that, the depth at the back, you've got players who can play in the midfield. It's now just get, keeping the balance correct that we take every game seriously. Because at the end of the day, the League Cup, we've just we put United out of the Carabao Cup. We've now got City. If we put yeah. City out of the Carabao Cup, <laughs> you've then got to be looking, well, hang on a minute, your chances of winning this is going oh, yeah, up. You've knocked two man. of the favourites out. Massively. Yeah. I think so, Wednesday it will come down heavily to tactics and how Moyes, you know, because Moyes is going to have a decision. He can go, right, should I go with the back five for this game? That works well. Again, we, we, we gave City a really good game last season with a back five. So, if he but that's what Moyes has got under his, his, yeah. his repertoire. He can, he can change it out. Yeah. He can change it out. And the other thing as well is that, that you look at this game, as much as City are probably going to be changed, a changed side, you've got to look at this game to sort of formulate your plan going into the league game. Do you know what well. I also want to big Moyes up on? Because I, I'm, I'm big at bigging Moyes up lately. He's game management. Because a couple of years ago, the substitutes were fucking awful. Wrong times, wrong places and all of that sort of thing. He gets them right now. Yeah. The substitute at the right times with the right people, with the right yeah. people coming off. Does everyone agree with that? I, I said, the odd game, I think, that, was it the Brentford game was the first time in a long yeah, time Brent where he got it wrong? Yeah. I said, I said to Nicky today, I said to him, about the 70, I'll get Lanzini on just to get in their heads because he knows that what he does against Spurs and then as soon as they comes off their fans are going to get frustrated the players are going to get frustrated thinking oh shit because Lanzini always turns up against yeah, Spurs yeah, yeah. and he and loves a goal against them so do you know what though? one thing I would like to have seen today is obviously I'd like to have seen us maybe go two up a few minutes to go and maybe bring Martin Oban on because unless we get him in the FA Cup this is the last time he's going to play Tottenham at home this yeah, is his last shit. Tottenham home game and you know what he's, he loves the, this derby yeah, doesn't he yeah. so it'd be nice but, to bring him on but look 
I don't, I don't points know. are more important than, yeah. than sentiment. Sentiment yeah. at the yeah. moment. He, whether, he's had he's had his fair yeah, share. I don't know whether yeah. you noticed, right? When Lanzini was stripped off, come on, just about before he comes on, Noble gets off the bench, comes and has a word with him, and goes sit back down. You know, Noble Noble knows. Yeah, he probably went you jammy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But Noble's there, like I said, yeah, we, we've said this all along. Noble is another one like Kevin Nolan when he was captain in the mm. club. You know, he was like having another coach on the sideline. Noble's going to be, he's like that. Noble yeah. knows. Noble wants to win these games. He wants to win every single game. I mean, that, that dressing room would have been buzzing after the game. I mean, I stayed stayed behind for about five minutes and just looking around and the atmosphere, everyone was in there. They were singing yeah. Sweet Caroline. See, and Declan Rice everyone, was Yeah, Declan all Rice. Cre- all the players come over. Moisey come over. I mean, you can still hear the fans now in the in the pub over there. Like you're having a good evening. Yeah, uh, There's going to be a few sawheads for work. This is what it's all about. This is what we've always wanted. You know, we, we, all we've yeah, ever wanted. I, I agree, mate. Is a yeah, team. I've been, to, there, I've been here too many times where you get a win like that and you think, fucking hell, thank fuck for that because yeah, we're not going to get relegated yeah. now or, or whatever like that. And you see people, they're, they're, they're too exhausted. People here are just having a good time. Yeah. They're just enjoying And the thing it. is, there will be periods during this season where we, we won't win games. Yep. And we know that. But it's about, and we've done it last season, it's about how you bounce back. You lose, you get a draw next game. You lose or you win. Mm. You, you can't go two or three games or four games without a win because that's when people will start turning. But that's, that's the thing here. When you look here, you know, that's our, I think Dom said it in the fan cam, that's our first league win here since we beat Leicester yeah. in August, you know. And I haven't really noticed. No, no not yeah. did I. Yeah, it's because we've been winning in Europe and yeah. away from yeah. home yeah. and things that's, like that. That's, that's a big thing for us. Yeah. You know, our first win as well after playing in Europe. Again, that's another milestone we've got over now. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We've broken that because that was the thing, in it? We'd play yeah. in Europe, then have a bad result. I, I think it's mad the way we're, we're, we're taking to it because a couple of years ago, we couldn't even beat Astra fucking Gugu. No, you know what I mean? but we had the wrong mentality back then. We had the wrong, the wrong world. players. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we Moisey's taking it serious, and I think that he he prioritises the Europa League over the League Cup. I reckon that's what he will do. But it will still put a strong team out on Wednesday because he doesn't want to lose this momentum. Yeah. You, you know, if we go out there on Wednesday night against Man City and we go out on penalties or something like that, but we've given them a good game, you know, that's still in that's the players' heads. Yeah, who you can ask. So, but long may it continue as well. Exactly, exactly. We, we'll enjoy it. We're here for the ride. The ups, the downs at the minute, one and up. So let's hope we keep going up. Brilliant. Uh, Can't wait really to get a work tomorrow, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much for joining us on this is the West Ham Fan TV's post match pint. Uh, you can go and check all the fan cams out. Uh, this is. Uh, what we've got Wednesday night we're, we're going to be building up for the Manchester City game um, so check out all the content now you can support us on Patreon if you click the link in the description down below and if you want our merchandise you can go check that in the link in the description down below um, anything else boys? yeah keep subscribing because we're near 60k <laughs> we're so close. I think we're going to get it this weekend hopefully yes. but I've been waiting for that for ages yeah. but yeah no look can't complain happy days it's been a great week to be a West Ham fan brilliant thank you very much one thing left to say come on your irons <laughs>